Greetings, Rick and Morty fans, and welcome to yet another OS Nerd video. In this video, we will be looking at Next Step 0.9. But first, the customary waffle as I describe what stuff this is running on. This is pretty much identical hardware emulation to the Next Step 0.8 video, in that it is the previous emulator running a Next computer, which is a 25 MHz Motorola 68030 with 64 MB of RAM and a 2 gig SCSI disk. This is running Next Step 0.9, which was an update to Next Step 0.8. Um, it was provided by Next at some point in 1988. Um, we don't appear to have the precise date, or if the precise date is known, it is some place where I cannot find it. If anyone does know the precise month, you don't have to know the day, just the month, then feel free to let me know in the comments. Okay, time to log in. Again, I am using a demo account with the system default user template applied, so this is exceptionally close to out of the box. Actually, it should be fairly identical to out of the box. Hopefully, nothing has been deleted from the disk image that I've used. We'll find out. So, we will notice that it looks pretty much identical to Next Step 0.8, with a few differences. The first one being that the dock now has feedback. So we can see that there are three dots on the bottom left hand corner of every single dock tile that represents an application that is not running. Applications that are running do not have the dots. We can also see that the resize button on the title bar has gone away. Instead we have this little bit of extra window decoration at the bottom. And that makes things a lot easier. There were there were three distinct resize modes. The first one is clamped so that it only resizes vertically. The second one is that it's clamped so it only resizes um, horizontally. Let's put it by there. Yes. And the third mode is that it's not clamped at all and you can resize it in any direction. We will also notice that the file system is remarkably different. Um, this system was still supplied on Magneto Optical Disk, um, but the layout was much different. Um, it didn't go to the same extent of hiding Unix in the file system hierarchy. Instead, it is plain 4.3 BSD uh, with slash Etsy slash bin slash user slash user slash bin etc except now it has a way of hiding all the unix stuff from the user unless one goes into the new preferences application and enables the unix expert which i will just quickly demonstrate because the preferences application provides this lovely clock which also survived all the way through to openstep 4.2 and uh, somewhere in here I think it might be this one, yes. If we click on Unix Expert, it will show us all the underlying Unix folders. I'm not going to do that because I have no need of it just yet. Applications wise, it is pretty much identical to Next Step 0.8, with the exception of one or two applications. In this one, we have Mathematica. We also have Right Now, and I believe we have a demonstration of FrameMaker. Yes, we do. So I will quickly run through the applications. Um, if you want to see a bit more about how the UI actually works and the components of the UI, I highly recommend you watch the Next Step 0.8 video. I'm going to try and not repeat myself because there is a lot more to cover in later editions and I don't think going through the basics of how the system works in, in every single video is going to be worthwhile. So that was a bit strange. I recorded about 20 minutes worth of demo of each application and OBS decided to cut audio out on me halfway through, so I'm getting to redo this all. Um, so yeah, um, weird. So let's have a look at some of the applications and I think the first thing I'm going to do is show you around preferences properly because we've only really had a short look at it. Uh, preferences is your standard configuration tool where you can change system preferences etc. So here we have the mouse configuration. This lets you set mouse speed, um, handedness, double click speed. The menu button when enabled lets you right click or left click depending on your handedness. 
to get at the menu as well as using the regular application menu. Keyboard settings as things like repeat speed etc. You can't change the keyboard locale or anything like that in this particular release. Uh, mind you the system was only shipped with one keyboard and given that this is 0.9 I don't think they were shipping outside of North America at this point. The display preferences for some reason let you change the volume on the sound box as well as setting things like the display brightness and, and automatic dimming. This one we've seen, um, this lets you configure um, the system alert style, whether or not you want voice or dialogue. Uh, the public window server, if enabled, I could then telnet into another next machine, and with a series of command line arguments, I could load an application on that next and have it display on my local next. And the file creation mask basically lets you change the default permissions on any new file created with the system. Next we have the clock settings. Now I've set this to 1988 so I can run the alpha version of FrameMaker which is time limited. And then we have the password settings. This basically lets you change your system password. Um, if you log into a brand new machine it will be as the me account which won't have a password. The root account also won't have a password. Major security failures which weren't addressed at all ever in the history of next step or open step. Um, so this lets you set a password. Once a password is set, next time you power the machine on or log off, you will be greeted by the login screen. The startup options let you select which device to boot from. In this case it should be booting from the SCSI disk, but because I've configured the ROM on the emulator to not auto boot, it doesn't matter. So that's preferences. I'll hide that so I keep the clock. Now, I'm not going to do the apps in the order on the dock here, I'm going to do them in the order on the directory, with the exception of IB, which I will do last. So edit, I don't think there's many differences between 0.8 and 0.9, I think it's pretty much the same, maybe they modified um, the menu to make it better. Um, this is still the basic plain text. Um, editor, although it does have support for rich text and it does have some uh, support for programming tools. Library was renamed to Librarian. I'll do the man page this time, and if I did a man page, say for uh, PS Wrap. And so if you single click, usually it will open in the preview window. And if you double click, in this case, it should open in the edit application. Um, I'm not going to demo Webster's or quotations because those haven't really changed between 0.9 and 0.8. Mail application has. Now, this one actually works for me, even though I don't have networking installed. It might just be that 0.8 was lacking a configuration option or what have you. So here we have an email that I sent myself earlier. This one contains two attachments. If I double click on it, it will open right now. And there we are. If you want to send mail, you just click on send and it comes up with a new message box. And you just type in the recipient, the subject, and the text. If you want to attach a, um, a voice message you can do so via this when you click on OK it will then attach. You can attach by basically going into the file browser and if I go back to my home directory um, and you can just drag and drop and there we are it's attached and deliver will do what it says it does. Now if you don't want to wait for mail.app's next fetch cycle, you can go to utilities, uh, new mail. And as you can see, the application icon animates. And if you want to reply, you just click on send with the message you want to reply to highlighted. And you click on reply, and then you can type. And then deliver. Likewise, if you want to forward, again with the message selected, hit send, and then forward, and type in the recipient name, and then hit deliver. 
And deleting is really easy, you can just highlight all you want and then press delete and off it goes. That one too. And then it's advisable to use compaction and that basically deletes all deleted email. What happens is it just gets marked as deleted so it doesn't get shown in the preview. You can still get access to it by, by um, there's somewhere there should be an option to, to show deleted. And you can see here there's an undelete option which I can't use because I compacted. Um, so uh, using compacting basically just gets rid of all deleted messages permanently. So this mail application, as I said, survived pretty much in this form right the way through to early versions of Apple Mail as far as I can tell. So that's the mail application. So the next one we're going to look at is Mathematica. Now this is a full version of Mathematica. It's not a time-limited demo as far as I can tell. Um, I think this was the initial version. Um, later on with Next Step 2, uh, Next Step 3 for M68K, you could buy updated versions of Mathematica. This one, when you start, it only loads the, um, the workspace um, editor and you can type your mathematics into it, then shift and enter and it loads the, the actual math kernel. And eventually it should tell me that 1 plus 1 equals 2. There we go, 1 plus 1 does indeed equal 2. So that's Mathematica. Nope, I don't want to save. Okay, so we've seen preferences. Quotations hasn't changed. Shell hasn't changed. Terminal hasn't changed. Webster hasn't changed. Right now hasn't really changed. Um, it's still a next application in this release. So let's have a look at some of the others. Now I'm going to start with the administration tools because 0.9 saw the initial release of NetInfo. Now on 0.8 to add a new user or what have you, um, you just go in and you would edit the password in Etsy and that would be done. If you wanted to add a new machine, you could modify the boot P setup, etc. With 0.9, they've tried centralizing everything under NetInfo. So usually one of the machines on a network um, would be a NetInfo master, and maybe you'd have a few NetInfo slaves, and they would contain a bunch of databases that are similar to Yellow Pages or NIS, and um, the machine, a client machine, when it boots up, would poll the network, try and locate a master. Um, the master's configuration would have a machine um, that would have a MAC address and then various configuration options for that, such as the IP address. If the MAC address matched, uh, matched the client, the configuration data was sent to the client and the client would configure itself thusly. Um, it's a really good system. I use NetInfo for all my Next Step 3 and OpenStep 4 VMs. Uh, and this, like I say, was pretty much the first version. So, for example, if you wanted to add a user, you'd go into Users, you'd create a new directory with the name of the user, and then you would fill out the properties to match um, the password format. In case you're curious, that password there is nothing special, it's just the word demo. It only works on one or two machines, which you can't get access to anyway because they're next step and not networked. So if you thought, oh my god, I'm going to run John the Ripper, very, very sorry to disappoint. So that's NetInfo Manager. I can't show the Net Manager because I don't have root permissions of this account. But Net Manager is if you have a standalone Next machine that doesn't use NetInfo, you could use Net Manager to manually configure the IP address and, and the default gateway, etc. Tech Report was just a tool used by Next for bug reports. I'm actually curious as to what would happen if I got networking working on this machine, filled this out, and then pressed send report. Because as far as I know, next.com is still owned by Apple. So would there be some poor guy in Apple suddenly getting a strange email going on about next step 0.9? So the demo applications. Um, there are quite a few here that are meant to demonstrate the power of the next. Um, I didn't show many of these in the Next Step 0.8 video because um, I tried keeping it to 20 minutes and I was running out of time. But you have basic demonstration applications to show the power. Um, balancer 
um, is a seal that learns how to balance a stick using neural networking. Billiards and break up are games, etc. And you have a few other bits and pieces. Um, one of which I will show later. Hopefully sound will work. If not, I will load it up on Next Step 0.8 and tack it onto the end of this video. But FrameMaker. Now this should work because I tried it earlier after I set the date back to 1988. This is the original alpha version of FrameMaker for the Next. FrameMaker originally started off being an application for the Sun. Um, under It was either Sun View or Open Look slash Open Windows. Can't remember. I actually have uh, FrameMaker 1.1 on my Intel Next VMs, and Eric Levinas still uses this um, to do his diagrams for the Unix timeline and the programming language timeline. I'm quite surprised at how fast it is. Given that this is an alpha, it, is, it looks like it's got a fair number of features. Because I'd imagine that the rendering engine is probably um, taken directly from the Sun version, and then they just wrapped it around um, the AppKit toolkit. So yep, that's FrameMaker. It is, it is quite an impressive application for its time. So the next demo that I want to show, um, which is a demo I really like, um, I don't know if I'm going to get sound, but let's find out. And like I say, if I don't get sound, I'll just attach the version from 0.8 because that does have sound. So if I press on, no, no sound. Nope, no sound. I'm gutted. So that's it for Next Step 0.9. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and as always, if you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to leave them below. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. So this is the stealth demo running on Next Step 0.8. Um, I couldn't get sound working with it with 0.9, so 0.8 it is. So let's see, I want my nav aids and my com frequencies. Turn the engine on and while that's working, let's set some frequencies. So, so this version is slightly buggy because, um, or it appears slightly buggy because of the mouse handling uh, with previous. Um, see if I can try and set the ATIS at least. This is Bedford Information Zebra, 600 Zulu, sky partially obscured, visibility 3 miles in haze, wind 2805, altimeter 29.92, contact power on 119.6, advise you have Zebra. Okay, so that's good, let's try and set the field, 119.6. This is Bedford Information Zebra. Perfect. Roger, 3 to Whiskey, cleared for immediate departure, runway 32. Ah, that's good, that's what I'd like to see. So I'm not going to set any of the um, the nav frequencies because I don't want to be here all day playing Russian Roulette. Let's get this thing in the air. Roger, 3-2 Whiskey, contact departure on 120.6, good day. Yeah, thank you. Whoa, okay, so, um, um, no, don't want to crash yet. I want to actually do some of that flying stuff first. I'm going to stall if I'm not careful. Okay, let's see if I can try and set flaps naught. Um, come on. Nope. There, that's better. Flaps naught. Still a bit too slow, so let's lower the nose a bit. I want to remain... Um, oh, the gear is down.
So let's put the gear down, up, up, down, down, up. Up. There we are. So let's get... Let's see if I can try and do a 500 FPM climb. You know what that'll do? We're climbing. We're climbing. That's the important part. We're not crashing. We're not. We're not plummeting headfirst into the ground. We're climbing. I just lower the RPM. Uh, I suppose that'll do. Now we're descending. So I'm bringing those up. And yeah, we're climbing. We're climbing still. Um, the aircraft should settle down. Let's see. I think was it on the Piper? Um, I think that's a good enough cruise RPM. Um, let the aircraft speed up a bit. I don't know how realistic a simulation this is, but um, it this doesn't seem too bad. Okay, let's declare an emergency. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Idiot pilot. So I say again, mayday, mayday, mayday. Idiot pilot. Whee! I'm stalling. Looks like I'm I'm in some kind of... Actually, can I put this in a, in a spin, I wonder? There's no rudder. So, did I void the warranty? Uh, 